Okay, so you mentioned the PDO, and um, uh, some people have told me that uh, uh, we have we have switched the phases of the PDO right around the time of that 98 El Nino. We were in a positive phase from 1976 up until 1998. Right, we're in a negative we, phase. And, and then we went into this negative phase uh, up until about now. And that's the symptom of it is it tends to favor these things called La Niñas right, over El Niños. And we certainly think that uh, it's quite plausible that that 1997-98 event is what kicked us into that negative phase. There was a tremendous amount of heat that came out of the ocean in association with that event. That's one of the things which uh, puts more moisture into the atmosphere. It's one of the things that led to that very active hurricane season in 1997. Uh, there's a lot of extra fuel for weather systems in general around the world with all of this extra moisture that goes into the atmosphere in association with this. So the ocean tends to lose heat. That leads to a mini global warming in the atmosphere and so this does tend to lead then to a, a year or two of higher temperatures where the global mean temperature goes up uh, uh, and so that's one of the other prospects that we can look forward to but at the same time you know, the ocean has lost some of that heat that it's been storing up. Okay, so we've been in a period for the last decade that has favored La Nina events where the ocean tends to suck that heat in and, and kind of dampen global temperatures. That's right, uh, and, and some, of that, some of that heat's gone quite deep as well. And, and so what... Um, uh, this has been part of the dialogue uh, between uh, uh, scientists and those that say that, that uh, uh, global warming has stopped or slowed down. Uh, can you speak to that a little bit? Well, this is, this is right. We think that since 1998, in this negative phase of the specific decadal oscillation, that there has been uh, some changes in the uh, atmospheric winds at the surface. In turn, these have changed the ocean currents. They have changed the overturning uh, currents within the ocean, and more heat has been uh, pulled down in the subtropics, in both the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, uh, away from the surface. So more heat has been has been buried in some deeper parts of the ocean. But uh, there's also been effects in other parts of the ocean, even into the North Atlantic and over the Southern Oceans, and there some of the heat has been buried even deeper, and that, that stuff is not coming back in any short-term fashion. Uh, that's sort of a part of the overall global warming, if you like to think of it that way, that you know, since the planet is heating up, the oceans have to heat up, and, and that's a part of the process which is going on as well. So in uh, the Pacific has some uniqueness in that regard in that it can take up heat, store it for a while, and then give it back. But some of the heat has simply warmed up the ocean and is probably not coming back. So we know we are able to measure the heat that is going into the deep ocean, is that correct? Well, we have estimates. I wish they were better than we than than they are. We only really have a good ocean observing system since about 2006 on. This is the Argo uh, system of uh, floats that are deployed around uh, a thousand meters below the surface, and then they go down and to 2,000 meters and they pop up to the surface and make measurements of temperature and salinity along the way and then they telemeter that back to uh, through satellites to to ground stations and and we can track uh, what's going on in the ocean now in ways that we never could before and there are about you know there are over 3,000 of these so-called Argo floats around the world that are measuring the ocean in ways we never saw before. In 1992 was a key time or the end of 1992, that was when altimeters went up so we can measure global sea level more accurately and that gives us an overall feel for what's going on in the ocean, where the warm water is and, and where it isn't uh, and uh, whether or not the ocean is expanding and so there's an overall increase in heat in the ocean but it doesn't give us the detailed information about what's going on below the surface. But before 1992, the information on the ocean is more fragmentary. We do have 
things called expendable bathythermographs. Uh, so there's, there's some measurements that go back to about the 1970s. Before the 1970s, not so much. Okay, when, when we look at the temperature record globally over the last 20 some years or so, uh, there does seem to be, uh, the, the spikes of global temperature do seem to follow more or less the El Nino cycle. That's correct. And so... Yeah. The El Nino years, in fact, yes. Right, so the so El Nino... 1998 was the warmest year last century as, as all of this heat came out of the ocean in association with the 1997-98 El Nino event. Right, and then 2005, 2007, 2010, those were all sort of minor El Nino yes. kind of years, right. Okay, so what does that lead us to believe uh, if, if we are indeed going into a, a large El Nino event? Well, uh, we, we, can, we can certainly say with great confidence that this year is going to be very different than quite a number of the years we've seen so far this century. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, the prospects are that uh, it'll be quite different. Across North America in the wintertime, this tends to favor a much more active jet stream and storm track across the southern parts of the United States. And so storms barreling into Southern California and sea level is also higher off the coast of, Sel uh, of Southern California. This increases greatly the risk of erosion and last time in 1997-98 there were pictures of houses toppling into the ocean because of that tremendous erosion that occurred. So the good thing is that it tends to break the drought uh, in in the southern parts of California, uh, but uh, and and the uh, wet weather actually continues all the way across the South, across uh, through Texas and and uh, even into Florida, uh, cutting down on the risk of wildfires and uh, all throughout that region. At the same time, it tends to be a bit warmer and drier in the northern tier states in the United States, uh, and so it, it does tend to be warmer as a whole but the southern tier states actually are a bit wetter. Okay, is there anything else that I haven't asked you about that you think is particularly important for people to know? Well, one of the key questions is whether some of these events are sufficient to change this thing called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Will it change it into back into a positive phase again? I, you know, the, the biggest pileup of, of water in the, North, in the Pacific or anywhere in the world over this uh, recent period was in the vicinity of the Philippines. That's one of the things which led to this super typhoon Haiyan that went through the Philippines late last year. And uh, the sea level was, as I say, about eight inches higher than uh, it had been uh, in the 1990s or, or earlier. And uh, because the water was so warm in that region, there was uh, plenty of fuel for the storm to feed upon. As that big storm came in and churns up the water, it, instead of feeling colder water below the surface, there was still more warm water down below the surface. So that storm was firstly fueled by that, and then it's riding on higher sea level. The storm surge was so much worse as a consequence of that. Well. You know, are we going to change that? Already, the sea level has dropped quite a bit in the area of the Philippines. And, you know, that's far enough off the equator that there's some indications that it's more than El Nino going on, I think, at the moment. And so one of the real prospects to look out for is whether we go back into a different phase of this Pacific Decadal Oscillation. And one of the potential prospects we can watch out for is whether the next whole decade will be distinctly warmer uh, and uh, and so you know in terms of the global mean temperature instead of having a, a gradual trend going up maybe the way to think of it is that we have a series of steps like a staircase and and it's possible that we're approaching one of those steps and we will go up you know two or three tenths of a degree Celsius to a next level and maybe we won't come down again. I think that's one of the things we could possibly look out for. Wow, okay. Uh, all right, that's uh, sobering. So um, 
I, I think that's uh, that's all I that's all really I can process for right now. That's that's a tremendous amount. Um, but uh, if if we get into this, I might have to call on you again. Um, well, what I will call on you for is uh, if my if my suggestion comes true, then you'll have to go back and dredge it out and say, oh look. Somebody at least. Absolutely. <laughs> if okay. it doesn't come true, you know, we can bury we'll it. We'll bury it. Yeah, yeah, we'll bury <laughs> it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And it's great to see you. And uh, I, I, I can't tell you how, uh, how grateful I am for your generous uh, time. All right. So. You're most welcome. Well, summer's coming, Peter. Okay. We'll enjoy it. Have a good Ciao. day. You bet. Bye.